I saw this video of a guy in Ohio. He posted this to Facebook. Uh, I'm pretty sure it went viral. Um, he took a snowball and he held it and he put a lighter underneath of it. And the lighter, as it, it was right underneath the snow, the snow didn't melt. Instead, the snow turned black and started to stink. Like, at the area where the fire was hitting it, it turned black. I'll, I'll show you in a few minutes. And, I'll, you know, me being an engineer, I'm uh, into science and stuff. Uh, I'm thinking, wow, this is neat. I have a few ideas. I'm just waiting for him to confirm my suspicions. You know, I have the... I wouldn't know specifically. Uh, you know, it's one of those things you look at and you, you form some ideas. You don't know off the top of your head. But I'm waiting for him to confirm my suspicions. And he gets to it. He says, you want to know why it does this? And I'm thinking, all right, he's going to prove that I was right. And instead, he said something very, very stupid. And this will make any science person cringe. Two words, chem trails, that motherfucker. So I'm going to do some good old-fashioned science here, and I'm going to tell you what exactly caused that snow to turn black. So this is uh, fresh snow. Well, I shouldn't say fresh. It's a day old, but fresh snow from my lawn. And I'm going to compact it into a snowball. And... Uh, bear with me, I only got one hand here. I'm going to set it up on a rig, which is actually just a tea container, and we're going to melt it. I'll show you what happens. So here's our big old snowball. So here's my crack lighter, and you'll understand why in a second, but here we go. In the name of science, look at that. Look at that, it's turning black and it's not melting. I wish the camera would focus on it better. See that? It turns black, but it doesn't melt. Well, now we're going to get to the sciencey part. I'm going to explain to you why it's not melting and why it's turning black. I mean, yeah, it smells like burning plastic. So, now for the science part. Butane lighter. Stuff on there. Again, butane lighter. Glass desk. Awesome computer. I'm going to set it off. Look at that. See what's building up there? That is the same black stuff. Back to the ball of chemtrails. So, now we know something. It wasn't the snow. It was the lighter. And why was that? Well, that's because there's a really bad, it's, you push this button and the gas comes out. And this acts as a basic carburetor right here. This allows the air to mix with the fuel, getting your flame. In my case, really big flame. You can get these at Walmart real cheap. But, uh, it's really crappy and not all the fuels burn. And whatever's left behind, soot, and whatever is not burnt is deposited into the snow. Look, I can just poke that away. There it is. There's black cruddy stuff showing up. And for those of you familiar with coal, it looks like coal dust. And the reason that is is because snow is a very good insulator. Snow is very porous. Ironically, water is a very good heat conductor. But snow, on the other hand, if I can get up close enough to get a view here, if it'll focus, doesn't look like it's going to... There we go. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I don't think it's going to do it. Snow's very porous, and as such, as you run this fire under it, the soot fills those pores. Science. You notice it's not doing it right now, and that's because it's aimed upward. Let me, uh... It won't do it from the top. If I hit this little mark right here, you can see it starts turning black here. There we go. Now if I let it turn blue, that's where its highest heat is, where its most carburation is. Look at that, not turning black. Once that yellow starts though, it'll start turning black on you. It's the soot filling those pores, and the reason it's not melting is because, well, it is melting. 
Um, snow, again, being porous, not only holds to soot, it holds to water it melts, and that water can refreeze. So unlike ice, which will just melt and drip, this will hold itself together. So, chemtrails, debunked. As for this, you know, I heard someone claim, well, it's geoengineered snow, it's a synthetic. If you melt it, it's going to turn back into its composite chemicals. Ugh, no. Um, and you can prove that by turning a fire on. If I turn the right fire on, and not burn my house down. You can melt all this away. The only thing that will be left is scale. And this is a process known as distilling. That's how people get distilled drinking water. You literally evaporate snow, or what snow. You evaporate water over and over again. You take the vapor and you evaporate it. And it purifies it. It's because water leaves stuff behind when it melts. So if I melt all this snow, if there are any mysterious, horrible, commie chemicals in here, it would be left behind. The only thing you're going to find is calcium deposits. Scale. And for those of you who say, well, you don't know what's in that. It could be causing something else. Okay. Well, I can't prove everything, but... Scale is really common, and if there are any other impurities in it, it would have changed the color of the scale. And at the end of this video, you'll see the only thing left behind is some brownish crap stuff from calcium and deposits that get left behind. So, here it is, still working on melting. I've turned it off a couple times, I had to leave the room, but... You can see on the edges there, brown crappy stuff. Scale! I'm not running it that hot, so it's not crazy boiling, but it is making vapor. I can feel the heat coming off of it, and if I smell it, it's, it's, uh, no smell. You know, nothing crazy. Something that you would smell if there were chemicals. So, another one debunked.